welcome. Welcome, one and all. Uh, won't you step inside my private lair? And like the spider told the pretty fly, some wonderful temptations do I have for you in there. Won't you take a seat, make yourself at home, and let this sybaritic storyteller delight you with a poem? That's Ms. Noir, keeper of the keys in the Hotel Hell. The Seven Deadly Sins is her telling of the most diabolical souls to sign her ledger. Basically, she's a receptionist in hell with ideas above her station, loves a bit of gossip, and they're her favourite stories. My name's Mel Bradley. I'm a spoken word artist and performance poet. I write and perform as myself, but sometimes I write and perform as Ms. Noir. I'm going to be talking to you through creating an alter ego and then I'm going to be talking to you about finding their voice. So character performance and alter egos are great tools for storytelling and we see artists doing this all the time using alternative personas to change voice, change style, maybe present their work in a very different way. Uh, artists like Beyonce incorporated Sasha Fierce so that she could be more outspoken and more playful David Bowie had Ziggy Stardust and a few others. <laughs> um, we have like Eminem had some shady. There, there are lots of them. And then we look at like drag artists and they create their characters from scratch and that's a very definite alter ego to who they are. Um, then you look at poetry and there are wonderful poets like Jerry Potter, who had Chloe poems, Birdspeed, who uses, she incorporates dance into her pieces, the repeat beat poet who draws influences from hip hop. Um, there's some fantastic contemporary poets. Um, there's also, if you look at uh, poets like Ezra Pound or T.S. Eliot, they also drew upon things like characters from the comedy as L. Art. The, the list's endless. It, it's, it's a thing that we do. We, we, we kind of create characters because they are, they're brilliant storytelling ways. Um, yeah, it, I think the most important thing is that it allows a space for the performer to change things up, be different, use a different voice and try out something new and experiment with who they are or who they could be. I created Ms. Noir and wrote the show for her between 2013 and 2016. Um, it's become a favourite of mine. I really love her character. I've performed the show several times across the country at different festivals and different events. As a performance poet, my work has always been fairly autobiographical and talking about subject matters that are quite difficult, which can be very vulnerable and exposing at times. So the idea of creating a character was a way of me challenging my own self-censorship issues. It was a way of branching out into storytelling styles that I'd never challenged myself on before. Um, to look at poetic forms that I always wanted to explore and test out. And to maybe branch into fictional storytelling. Um, just be able to stand on a stage and say things that I would never normally say as me. It was a great tool to be able to, to, to test that out and see how, see how it works. I'd had a conversation with a friend about creating this character that would be uh, a, a bolder version of me, a, a me that I couldn't be, um, that I would draw on the, the, the principles of burlesque and use that in the storytelling. Um, and looking at the origins of burlesque, of where the working class poked fun at the upper classes and, and, and things like, when you see in the, the cabarets of the 1930s and how burlesque was used then. Um, I wanted to be able to take risks with her storytelling. Um, and so back in 2013, I got a call from that friend to perform at a cabaret. I had only just sketched out the, the outline of the character. I hadn't anything written. I hadn't anything definite put down on paper. And um, when I got asked to do this performance, I had to frantically write down all of the ideas and create a story written in verse. And 
what came out was this was a very different style. Um, there was a definite rhyming scheme, which my work at that point, I didn't use rhyme very often, if ever. Um, there was, it was written in iambic pentameter. I had like, there was a very definite form emerged from the storytelling and the vocabulary was very different to the vocabulary that I would use on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, Ms. Noir was born. When creating a character for performance, uh, motivation is like the most important thing. Ask yourself, what is it you want to achieve out of it? Are you looking to perform in a new avenue that you haven't tried out before? Maybe you're known for writing serious stuff and you want to branch into comedy. Or perhaps you write, but you're just not brave enough to get on a stage and perform it. And you want to create a character to, I don't know, act like a superhero cape to get you up there and in front of that mic and in front of that audience and performing your work. Well, that's, an alter ego is pretty good for that. When I wrote the first piece, that initial performance, I really liked how it felt to inhabit this other person and to kind of discard the things that the insecurities that I had about my, me and presenting me to an audience about, you know, how my body felt or how my body looked or thinking about um, what I was trying to say. Yeah, costume was quite a big thing and being able to put on the costume and inhabit that person, go out and perform. And then most importantly, being able to come off stage and take off the costume and come back to me. When I was writing the show, I thought about the seven deadly sins as a really good um, as a really good subject matter. The first piece was written, and it just sort of seemed to flow into the next one, which was gluttony, and then the rest sort of tumbled out after that. Uh, drawing on my theological background and bringing them into an updated modern context. I got asked to do an actual burlesque performance with music and no poetry um, and so the, I took the character on a research mission. This was a chance to explore telling stories without actually saying any words. I experimented a bit more with who she was or who she could be. Um, I came across in my research a character that is, it's a, an Afro, she's an Afro-Brazilian spirit entity, the Pombajira. Um, I found stories about women who had invoked this spirit to take on uh, challenges that were presented to them. Um, she's known as being quite sexually aggressive and quite a, quite a, a, a sort of forward and progressive female character. And I love the idea of having these attributes given to a female character. I love the idea of being the bad woman. Um, and so I took elements from her character and brought them into who Ms. Noir could be. The feedback that I got from the very first performance of the full show was that we didn't get to see enough of her personality. We, we don't get to see it. We didn't get to see any vulnerability in her, that she was very confident and the storytelling was great, but there weren't any flaws presented. And flaws are really, really important whenever you're presenting a character. Um, it's the same as whenever you're writing a character in fiction. Um, you need to make them three dimensional. I think that Part of that is having a backstory. You know, who are they? What, what are the things that make them tick? What are the things that get them irritated? What are their bugbears? What's their favorite color? Who was their favorite, who was their favorite boy band? Or, or what was their, who was their first crush? Those little seemingly insignificant details actually go into making a, full, a fuller picture of who the character is by allowing yourself the space to play and experiment with performance inevitably gives you room as to grow as a performer. Giving yourself the opportunity to experiment with new ideas, try on different hats, take risks, test out new ideas is invaluable. Simple things like um, putting on a wig or having a particular outfit uh, to create a transformation process that prepares you for going out on stage, taking up that space, um, making yourself ready to be seen. 
it could be as simple as just one simple thing that allows you to perform a piece in a specific way, harness a particular attitude. Um, people might not know that you're inhabiting a different character, but you do. Experimenting with different types of storytelling tell really helped me to find and hone my own voice as a performer. Uh, being Ms. Noir, inhabiting that character, allowed me to become braver in what I get to say on stage. Um, I learned things like how to pass the vulnerability onto the audience, to take them on the journey so that I wasn't holding it all and feeling it all, um, uh, to let the audience experience the story. I feel much more comfortable now in my own skin and much more comfortable with me as a performer and I'm a lot less likely to censor myself. Research was a huge thing and it's something that I really love whenever I am writing and whenever I'm thinking about character. Um, but we'll talk more about that in the next video. Creating an alter ego has its own challenges. Uh, when you start off as a character and commit to performing as that character, where do they end and you begin? Or where do you end and they begin? Are they the one that gets to tell your stories all the time? Or just some of the time? Are they sectioned off for a particular project? Um, for me, I started off performing as me and then created her and the show. My challenge is that, how do I create other work for her? Do I create other work for her? Um, in terms of, spoke, of performance poetry or, or spoken word? Um, or do I let her end with just that one piece? I've seen artists who began their career as their alter ego and through their journey discovering that that alter ego's voice is the only voice that anybody ever gets to hear and then having to having to try and find how do how do they tell their own stories as them um do you kill off your character do you have some creative um accident that befalls them and that's it they're they're no longer in existence um i don't know if i want to kill off ms noir i mean she lives in hell so it would be pretty futile I've taken her from the realms of po performance poetry and put her, performed as her as a life model. Um, I've performed burlesque pieces as her. Um, I've done a few other things that weren't strictly performance poetry and she's been a great tool and a great vehicle to allow me to explore that side of storytelling. Um, I would love to explore more ideas for her, but we'll get We'll see what comes up, I guess. Um, when, when I did the last run of the show, we introduced uh, a new character into the story town, the caretaker, um, who looks after the grounds of hell. Um, and in between her telling her stories, we got to see him doing his rounds on his nightly duties. Um, and it was a great way of breaking it up and having some playful interaction. So maybe there's there's more scope there. Um, at the end of the stream, we, we finished it off with the two of them playing battleships over Zoom. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I very much hope to be performing as Ms. Noir when I'm in my 60s because she's awesome. <laughs> so what things have we looked at? Reasons why you might want to create an alter ego. Those are important. Uh, where might you look for inspiration? Experiment. Allow room for you to grow and for your character to grow. Be playful. Be adventurous. Uh, don't be afraid to try new things. Don't forget, the next video we'll be looking at finding the voice of your alter ego. See you then.